Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of WXR. Once again, I am your host and CEO, James Phoenix. Joining me this week is the usual group of knuckleheads, including Marcus Shadow. Yo. Chris the Mole. Hello. Richter Hammer. Hi. The Fallen Angel. Yeah. And the Queen of Hearts is also joining us today. Hey guys. Alrighty. So, this week we're going to take a look at a very wide ranging topic in the world of professional wrestling, and that is gimmicks. The good, the bad, and inevitably the ugly. Like gyms. <laughs> <laughs> the good, the bad, and the giant Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. That needs to be the tagline for the image. There you go. <laughs> we'll throw that on there. So, of course, gimmicks have been around since the very early days of professional wrestling, going all the way back to what most people consider to be the first gimmick of professional wrestling, that being Gorgeous George. Uh, ever since his day, uh, wrestlers have been using various gimmicks and uh, personality quirks to get themselves over to the fans, whether as a face or a heel. These can be anything from something simple as a, a particular personality, like uh, you know, Gorgeous George being flamboyant and over the top, to uh, something about to something a, a particular possession, like uh, for example, someone like JBL or Del Rio having money in cars, um, to you know something bizarre like the Boogeyman, for example, um, and everything in between. So there have been a lot of good gimmicks, bad gimmicks. Ugly gimmicks. Stupid so, gimmicks. Stupid gimmicks. Some gimmicks that seem gimmicks. to be coming back. Failed gimmicks. Yes, gimmicks. <laughs> well, it, it should be stated for the record here that if, for those that are unaware, in professional wrestling, there is an official three-year rule. And the three, three month. Three month? Okay, three month. I think, it, I think in terms of gimmick, it's more three year, though. <laughs> but anyway, it's three month or three year rule where basically it's stated that uh, in professional wrestling, um, in this case, gimmicks, but generally storylines... Uh, and events can be rehashed every three months, or in this case, three years, without fans recognizing it being used before. So, uh, there'll be a lot of, of course, gimmicks that were reused over the years, things like that. So, there will be duplicates on the list. So, why don't we start out? And apparently they bucked that rule with Sin Cara. Well, <gasps> you can never have too many masked wrestlers. <laughs> Boyaka. Ray Boyaka. Mysterio would like a word with 619. <laughs> Moving along. So I think we'll start off talking about uh, the. Now, yes, Mo? I was, I was going to say, clearly you can have too many masked wrestlers because the second they re bring back Sin Cara, Kane unmasks. This is true. <laughs> there can be only two. <laughs> yeah. There could be only two. That's is not, that the next King of the Ring not, tournament? This yeah. winner gets to keep their mask. But that's, yes. not, but that's not necessarily true, though. Because for a time we had both Kane and two Sinkaras. <gasps> we did That's have Kane and two them. Sinkaras, but they were both called Sinkara. It counts as just one. Oh, they were Sinkara <laughs> Azul and Sinkara Negro, get it right. <laughs> they had different colored nope. costumes for a reason. One was Sinkara, one was Venom. <laughs> <laughs> There's my old video showed off. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But yes, getting back in. One was Common Rider Yuki, one was Common Rider Knight. <laughs> okay then. So why don't we start off uh, with the well, probably the boring part of the video, and we'll talk about the best gimmicks, the gimmicks that we liked, the gimmicks that got over well, the gimmicks that we enjoy. That doesn't necessarily mean they have to be good, but the ones that we think are good or at least, excuse me, workable. And then from there, we'll then go in and talk about bad gimmicks that failed, that were hated, that were stupid, and go from there. Um, obviously... In a lot of cases, the biggest thing in WWE today is that a lot of people don't use gimmicks anymore. It's just, oh, here I am, and I have a particular personality trait. Like, oh, I'm Brock Lesnar, and I'm big and mean, I'm going to beat you up. You know, it, there's not a whole, or I'm Ryback, I'm big and mean, I'm going to beat you up. You know, or I'm big, would, uh, big and mean, I'm going to beat you I'm seeing a trend here. I would argue <laughs> Brock does have a gimmick. He's an MMA fighter, yeah. Yeah, since he came back from MMA, it's been he's an actual legitimate fighter and uses MMA tactics. True. So, yeah, but the gimmicks, a lot of t guys today don't really have gimmicks per se, so it's hard to find good gimmicks in wrestling today that are more than just a particular personality quirk and that are actually something that's really built upon, because a lot of guys just get over as 
themselves more or less. Um, so what do you think, guys? Today or the past? Your favorite gimmicks? Best gimmicks? Go. Obvious answer: Undertaker. Yeah, I was waiting. Yeah, that's got to be the best up. gimmick ever. Yeah, Undertaker's gimmick works, in my opinion, the best. Which we'll probably go into more eventually when we're doing a, a superstar evaluation, because it constantly changes and evolves. It doesn't just try to stay the same one. It evolves with every time, basically. Which that 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 worked. It, you need a gimmick that stays fresh. Uh, yeah, I mean, imagine how stupid it would be if you had a gimmick where it was just the same thing forever and ever, and you just all you do is change the color of your outfit. Hi, Back Tommy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Ouch. Fandango. <laughs> Hi, Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, all, and uh, that's true, yeah. And all fairs, he went, from, he, went, he went from a shiny jacket to one that actually had lights built into it. That's different. <laughs> to be to be fair, he also went from exciting Jericho to boring Jericho that wants to insult everyone just because they knew if he showed a mar- like a, just a glimmer of personality, people would cheer him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And... I know Marcus and Richter have been watching it for a while. And I'll say the non-obvious gimmick, which I actually did like. What's that? Evil Doink. <laughs> I say Evil Doink. Face Doink, eh. Evil Doink, come on. People are scared of clowns, and it's an evil clown that goes out of his way to, to intimidate and scare you and have this weird, awesome theme music. Evil Doink was actually kind of cool. I liked Evil Doink. Fair enough. I like the original Mankind. I thought that was an awesome gimmick. I liked the brown Mankind. Yeah. Yeah, where he was like a disturbed individual. I thought that was awesome. But then as he got older, it's just, no, it's Mick Foley in a mask. Goldberg. <laughs> to be fair, he has so many personas at this point. I think Mick Foley is the mask. <laughs> Possible. Smoking. Ah, uh, banter. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And I think whether you liked him as a wrestler or not, because I know some of us did, some of us didn't, I, I think his gimmick is one of the better gimmicks in professional wrestling. Um, primarily because for the time, and even now to a degree, it's a relatable gimmick, and that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. With the whole, he's a redneck, he's a rebel, he... You know, he's basically everything you wish you could do without getting in trouble. <laughs> he got to beat his boss's ass like every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he, he drank beer and flipped the bird. And, you know, it's – and I think that's part of why he was so popular back then because it, it allowed – you know, especially back then when it was – when WWF was the thing to watch because you're not supposed to watch it. It allowed like teenagers and young adults to kind of live vicariously through him because he was able to do what they couldn't do without, you know, getting thrown in jail. Yeah. Or fired or thrown. Exactly. (laughs) And I think that's why his gimmick is one of the better gimmicks, probably in the top five, if not top three gimmicks of all time in the WWE. Don't know if anyone else agrees, but I do. That's how I feel. Anyone else? Mm. Oh, this is such a riveting Good conversation. I, would, I know. <laughs> I, I've been twice. I was waiting for someone else. I, I, I did forewarn when we started that the, the best gimmicks part was going to be the boring part of this segment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. There's been loads of great gimmicks. Marcus. Like, I'm the saying, is... like, I'm saying, Marcus, talk about The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, I think The Rock's gimmick was less of a gimmick, and it's more an extension of himself, which is the reason why his gimmick was so good because it, it also kind of showed that you didn't you didn't really need a, an overly thought out gimmick if you had the right kind of personality and the right kind of creativity within your mind you could effectively just be yourself but be kind of an over the top version of yourself and it would still work but you have to be you know a certain type of person to do that and Dwayne Johnson of course had that kind of personality and and he was able to 
come up with a lot of random shit on the fly. I mean, yeah, a lot of his stuff was probably written too, but I, I think it was pretty equal, if not more so in the favor of he came up with his own stuff because, let's face it, it's The Rock is what he does. <laughs> mm. But oh, Of course oh, his oh, stuff oh. was written. It was on the wrist. Hey, <laughs> oh. Of, of uh, all the Rock's gimmicks, which one was the best? I think it, the gimmick, the evolutionary point in which he was at the top of his career when he was, like, teaming with Jericho. I mean, that, that to me, is one of my favorite rock moments of all time. It's just him and Jericho ripping into, what was it, like, Stephanie? Was it Stephanie, yeah. Shane, and Booker T or something like that? Yeah, I think so. That was At awesome. least Stephanie and Booker T. When, when, what are we talking about? The Rock. When yeah, I, I mean, which, which, which particular event? Oh. It was when he was with uh, when he and Jericho were face. On I think it was on SmackDown, and they were ripping into they were going back and forth. Um, on I, the I'm not sure. So I, I, Shane and Booker were definitely there. I'm not sure if Stephanie was. Um, it was Stephanie. I, I remember Stephanie being there because that yeah. she was the butt of about half of their jokes. It was hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the best point. His Hollywood rock gimmick actually was pretty yeah. good. It just didn't get much of a reaction. I'm not. I'm, I'm not the. I'm not totally. Sure. Stephanie might have been there, but she wasn't. She may have been the butt, but she didn't get the best joke because the best line was after Jericho said something, and the Rock decided decided to top whatever he was saying, and the Rock said, "Oh, Jericho, how about this? Booker T and Chain, the WCW champion sucker, and the punk ass motherfucker." And they bleeped him out, and the audience went, "Ooh." Yeah, pretty much. That it was the best line of that entire Stephanie promo. Stephanie Ron- it was Stephanie Rhino and Booker T. Ah. Yeah. Nice. Ah. Okay. Oh wow, Rhino. <laughs> oh yeah. The, the one with the one with Shane was a few weeks prior to that when uh when the Rocket first come back and Shane and Booker T came out to address him and they start talking about first at first the Rock stopped and was like well, the Booker T is like, well, who in the bluest of blue hells are you? And he explained, I'm the WCW champion, sucker. So let the rock get this straight. You're the WCW champion, sucker. <laughs> and then Shane said something to him, something to him after that. And he goes, "Well, the rock, between you, between you wanting a piece of the rock's ass and the, your friend here being the WCW champion, sucker, the rock just wants to know what the hell kind of alliance you're running over there." <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That was the one that had Shane in it prominently. Hell, if we talk about wrestling as a whole as well, two great gimmicks. And I say two great gimmicks because on their own, <laughs> they're not on their own. They were kind of good, but together they were so fucking perfect. Is together, it too cool. No, <laughs> Tommy Dreamer and Raven. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Fair enough. Those two gimmicks together were just so fucking awesome. And I loved Raven in ECW. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the he was one of the characters there that I actually did like. I liked Raven. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't really watch ECW much. What was his gimmick outside of pushing a shopping cart full of weapons wherever he went? Basically, he was the outsider kid. Ah. And he was come he come back for revenge against the jock, which was Tommy Dreamer. Mm. Which is funny because that made Tommy Dreamer the face and him the heel. It was it was awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wasn't he also ECW's version of Sting effectively? Because he'd always be like in the rafters. He'd always have weapons and shit. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember him always being up in the rafters and always him um, quoting Edgar Allan Poe because he'd always use, quote, the Raven Nevermore. Well, yeah, that's where the name came from. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Uh, uh, hello, if we're going if we're going back, back a bit, how about, how about possibly, and I'm going to say ironically because the second one's not, but how about Mr. Perfect? That was a fucking awesome That's gimmick. That's an amazing gimmick. That yeah. was. Yes. Mr. Perfect was just amazing. That was an awesome thing. But it only, and, but it only worked because he was Mr. Perfect. Because he was yeah. that good at everything. And the reason I say that ironic is because the second one, I think, as much as Undertaker <coughs> is my favorite wrestler of all time, this may be the most perfect gimmick ever in professional wrestling. Okay. Brett the Hitman Hart. Yep. I was thinking about that too. Yeah. You have... 
have the guy that he's doing like the whole similar to the Hulk Hogan thing of I'm patriotic, but he doesn't rub it in the face like Hulk Hogan with the waving the flags and shit, obviously because he's Canadian. He comes out, he puts the glasses on the kid so the kids love him. He 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 lets his in ring ability basically shine through for the adults. And all the and basically everything he's saying, like when he says he is the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be, he says it because it's true, <laughs> and it's fucking awesome. Brett's fucking awesome. Yep, I can agree with that. And I say pre, I say face Brett because I'll be honest, I didn't much care for when they tried to make him heal afterwards when, like the team Canada and stuff. I was like, nah. Yeah. No. But speaking of, but speaking of, that's another thing about gimmicks. Have there ever been any gimmicks based on good gimmicks based on nationality? Um, the Un-Americans come to mind when it was Lance Storm and uh, Kamala. What's that? How about Kamala? Kamala. <laughs> yeah, that worked well. Iron Sheik. <laughs> Sheik. Yeah. William Fuck. Regal. Bullshit. <laughs> Giving a shout out to um, my boy William Regal. <laughs> Go for William Regal. Well, they yes. Had some old school role the other day singing his national theme song. Nice. nice. Well, William 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 Regal may be one of the greatest ever, not only because of his wrestling skill, but because he took the most basic gimmick of all time and has made it work for what like fifteen years now. <laughs> and it's not boring. No, because his original gimmick. His original gimmick, and Richter will attest to this, and he'll remember, he's a man. He's a man. No, no, that was it. No, no, no. That was later. As I, origi- originally, if memory serves, he was Lord Stephen Regal. Yep. That is true. That is true. Then, then they only did the man gimmick during the when they wanted they were as a as a kind of a funny mocking thing during the Attitude Era. The video that accompanies that song is hilarious. It is amazing. It is. I can agree. That is that is great. Oh. Something for the absurdity of it. <laughs> or how about Marcus Shadows' homeboys? Indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking they for awesome. was pretty good. I did like them. <laughs> SmackDown. No, no, not that team. And yeah, I, I don't know if anyone else remembers these that much, <clears throat> but I kind of like the Quebecs. Remember them? Vague. The Canadian, the Canadian Mounties, that basically oh, yeah. did twin <laughs> magic before the Bellas did twin magic. <laughs> they, it was a cheesy gimmick, kind of, but for a tag team back then, when it was like teams like them and the Nasty Boys and shit, it totally fucking worked. And I'll be honest, I didn't recognize them. I honestly did not recognize either one of. I did not recognize them properly when they swapped, which that makes it more believable. <laughs> This is true. Ah, uh, let's see. Other great gimmicks. Actually, you know what? You know what was what could have been the worst gimmick of all time, but actually got over as an amazing gimmick. Doink the clown. <laughs> I mentioned Doink. Did you? I didn't even hear it. I'm sorry. No, you mentioned Evil, evil Doink. Doink. Yeah, Evil, evil Doink. Doink. <laughs> evil Doink. Which was Doink when he first came in it. He was awesome. <laughs> Oh, good. Let us not forget one of the greatest heel gimmicks of all time. You've got no chance in hell. <laughs> True, and that was and they are, that's one of the greatest gimmicks of all time, ironically, because that was unintentionally created. <laughs> yep. And, and it's still the best heel gimmick to this day. And I want to say, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that was... What's that? Mm-hmm. Good gimmicks based on nationality, and no one mentioned Muhammad Hassan. <laughs> Oh, I wonder No, Muhammad Hassan was kind of cool. I like that Muhammad was actually Hassan. a good gimmick. It was just ill-timed. It was it was a good gimmick. They just took it in the completely wrong fucking direction to where it was meant to be intended. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because well, ironically, because of the idiots in the audience, but still, yeah. I like Tiger Ali Singh better. <laughs> I remember him like when he used to pay people money to come and lick Koi off his feet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Just whenever I saw him, I always thought of Punch Out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Didn't help that they had those boxing matches around that time too. Yeah. Yeah. And you technically, speak- and nationality-wise, how about Mister America? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I don't see him anymore. I wonder what he's up to. Who knows? Oh, Who knows? oh you'll see him come to Royal Rumble. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be disappointed if it's that Hulk Hogan ripoff of Mr. America. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> uh, speaking, of, speaking of gimmicks based uh, partially on nationality, how about Kurt Angle? Uh, yep, Kurt Angle's awesome. Yeah, and the fact that... It, 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 what yeah? What, what about these? What about these gimmicks like Kurt Angle and Mark Henry that are based on accomplishments from like 10, 15, 20 years ago? Are they still hey. legit? Hey, it worked for the Heartbreak Kid. <laughs> you still the Heartbreak Kid in his forties, and it worked. This is true. This is true. It works for Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. Works for The Rock, kind of. Yeah. No, at, at this point, at, honestly, at this at this point, it's it's only half gimmick because half the time he's just Dwayne now. <laughs> true, true. And as for Hogan, is that is it really a gimmick to walk out covered in bright ass red and yellow and tell people to take their vitamins and say their prayers? <laughs> That's true. You do every time we play the game. <laughs> also, another gimmick that. That's gold. Whether night, it's good yeah. or bad could be debatable, but it was certainly one of the coolest gimmicks ever. And I'm sure Rick Duran probably, uh, Jim will agree, the brood. Yeah, I was going to mention yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, know I, if it was I'm good, so but I did like them. It yeah, was I an liked awesome the brood. gimmick. And I mean, that it, entrance it, was it, the dedication <laughs> that they showed to that gimmick, I mean, did it the, says it all when, when Gangrel and I believe Luna, because I think they were married at the time, actually went out and and actually got like – canine teeth implanted in their mouths. Like I said, did, did WWE invent that gimmick? That was something I was always curious about. I liked the brood. I, I liked the brood. I just always remembered when we, I used to watch when they were on TV, like when they first came in and stuff, the, the copyright used to quote some books. Because <clears throat> uh, the name Gangrel was from um, White Wolf Publishing, I think. Ah. From like some D&D game, I believe. Because that's as, as far as I know, it was the name Gangrel that was. Uh, Gangrel, before. Old World of Darkness, a fictional clan of vampires in the role-playing game Vampire: The Masquerade. Yep. Nice. Also, I'm surprised you didn't know more. It's also a British literary magazine in the 1940s. Yeah, because that was alive in 1940s. Because <laughs> yeah, he's 73 years old. <laughs> Thank you. That was maths I couldn't even do. Yeah. <laughs> old is secretly older than us. What a twist! <laughs> <laughs> At least he's an old man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a gimmick I did like as well. When we <clears> talk about him as well, nationality-wise and other nationality-wise, I kind of liked the first Tatonka. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm not on about when they brought him back as fat, washed up Tatonka, <laughs> like fat Matt and shit. That was ridiculous. I'm- I'm on about when it was to Tonka in shape, doing stuff like him v Lex Lugo and shit like that. And Tatanka was kind of cool. Tatanka in my SNES WWF Royal Rumble game, Tatanka. Yeah. Yes. The, the one that actually did Hulk Hogan's hulking up, but used to go, go, oh, 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 as he went around the ring. Which, if he did that now, oh my god, the outcries. <laughs> the amount of <laughs> outcries that there would yeah. be with that. But I like that, and I kind of touched on it with that. The other one would be, how about the pretty boy gimmicks? The one I was Lash. thinking off off the top of my head was Lex with the narcissus. True, not a. Yeah. That's true. He, he did. I was gonna say before we go into that, if you want, since you're talking about nationality gimmicks, why hasn't anyone mentioned one of the greatest nationality gimmicks of all time, the British Bulldog? Because <laughs> British Bulldog was fucking awesome. Until the Attitude Era. Yeah, well, I'm talking about his original gimmick. <laughs> yeah, the original British Bulldog was <laughs> the, awesome. The, second the one they stripped, based on Britain. <laughs> yeah, the second they stripped away everything that made him British Bulldog and put him in jeans, it's like, what the fuck? You can't take a guy that plasters himself in British flag and put him in jeans. That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, yes, pretty boy gimmicks. Um, hmm. For the time that he lasted, despite being unable to do much in the ring, Chris Masters had a pretty good gimmick. Uh, Chris Masters was Actually, cool. one of my favorite Pretty Boy gimmicks is actually a recent gimmick, and that's Cody Rhodes. Yeah, that was, Dashing that was, Cody that was Rhodes. Classic, of course. That was an awesome gimmick. Yeah. 
I also kind of liked <clears throat> when I was younger. I sort of liked the model and Rick Rude. Mm-hmm. Rude, yeah. The ravishing one. Yeah, always good. And I then of course, don't know if anyone else he who comes. made Pretty Boy gimmicks pretty much accepted. Woo! <laughs> That was the basis of his entire gimmick. <laughs> I thought I thought the basics of his entire gimmick was, no matter what he does, he bleeds. <laughs> that too. Rick the nature boy is gonna cars. brush his teeth. Oh, he's bleeding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but who does anyone remember the model? Not really. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, that's right. a little too old school for this crowd. What was his real name? It was the model, oh, well, the, the model Mick, Nick or Mick or something like that. He used to do like a basically his finisher was like a Boston Crab style finisher. Are you talking about Rick Martell? That's the one. Oh yes, Rick Martell. Uh, that name I know. I never actually saw his stuff, but I know of him obviously because I know his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, huh, how about Queen of Hearts and the Fallen Angel? They haven't chimed in much yet. Best gimmicks, favorite gimmicks? What do you think? I, th I think it's obvious the Fallen Angels' favorite gimmick. Nathan Jones. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, Nathan Jones. <laughs> no, no, given his name, his favorite gimmick is Christopher Daniels. <laughs> no. <laughs> Most definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only probably good... Um, good gimmick at, um, that I've seen in TNA would have to probably be Bully Ray. With his, well, technically his bullying gimmick. Mm. He's the big bad man. I can agree with that. that. That was actually pretty cool. And it says a lot because I remember when like WWE split up the Dudleys and I was like you can't split up the Dudleys that won't work and you had like Dave on as the priest and stuff I'm like no it just doesn't work yeah, yeah, TNA bro, bro. did it and I'm like holy fuck why didn't someone do this sooner <laughs> yeah. yeah brother Devon and brother Batista no brother Devon and Deacon Batista get it right Deacon but Batista he was Deacon Batista oh. his job was to carry the big the big the for some reason made out of apparently lead change box and talking about good gimmicks, that was a fucking awesome gimmick, Deacon Batista. That was pretty good. Mm. It's a great way to introduce him. Yeah. Can I see one of my favorite gimmicks of all time? If we're going to go into uh, group gimmicks for a sec. Evolution. Well, um, Sorry, go ahead, Jeff. There is one that I can remember back when there was the Bushwhackers. Ah, <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, the Bushwhackers. Good old and bushwhackers then there old. were... There were the other two that were um, had the spikes on their um, L -O -D, they had the, L -O -D. on their shoulders. The Road Warriors. Yeah. Uh, they were awesome. Except after ooh, one, what a rush. Except after one of them died and got replaced by Heinrich. And fun <laughs> fact for everyone listening, the Bushwhackers is what Marcus Shadow based his walk on in real life. <laughs> you know what? No. Somehow. Somehow, listening to, to to that right there feels like we've had this conversation before. <laughs> we may. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain um, Vince went to the Bushwhackers for some help for his war. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but I, I will say, Evolution was kind of a cool. It was a kind of a cool group, group gimmick. I don't know if anyone else agrees. I'm not entirely sure, but I kind of thought, and it's ironic because Ric Flair's in it, I thought they were kind of a copy of the Four Horsemen. They were. They were kind of a copy of the Four Horsemen. I think, they, that's, like I said, the Four Horsemen were a little before my time of watching wrestling, but I think the difference was the Four Horsemen, from what I understood, were basically four contemporaries that worked well together. Whereas the thing about Evolution was that there was a variety of the members and that you had the one old guy, Ric Flair, who was the, the legend, the experience in there. You had the current top of the company, Triple H. And then you had you had the muscle Batista and the future Randy Orton. And I they, think it, it worked in that they had those specific roles in the, in the, uh, in the faction. They did that at one point with the Four Horsemen when they brought them back because they had Benoit. And don't say who. 
That, that joke's been done. <laughs> mm. He's officially going to be featured on the network. That joke's over. <laughs> oh, is he really? You, yeah, because... Are you talking about uh, that, be, that fictional character? Yeah, he's officially going to be featured on the network because they can't edit him out. So they're going to be flowing up a splash page instead every time before his matchup saying, all characters and stuff in this match are entirely fictional. Interesting. That way, just Jerry, in case, that way Jerry Lawler just in case is like, oh, look at how good Chris Benoit is. They can say that you talk about the fictional Chris Benoit, not the real one. Yeah. That's dumb. It's stupid, but it's the best they can do because they don't have time to pay people to go through and edit, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 hours of footage. Instead, I wish they had, like, VH1 pop-ups on them. Like, <laughs> there you go. They should so, like, they're like, oh, man, what a great move. And they're just like, like this guy's evil. He should die. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> they should hire George Lucas and digitally replace <laughs> him with young Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> But he can't, but he's not yes. allowed to do that now. He sold the franchise. He'll get sued. <laughs> no, no, no. If they were going to do it to make it accurate, they would replace him with Daniel Bryan. <laughs> wow, that's potentially really offensive. <laughs> Why? They're both great technical wrestlers. Yes, but you just equated Daniel Bryan, the top guy in the company today, yeah. to a fucking murderer. You just said, Nikki, get the hell out. I'm going to say... Hi, James. Have you never listened to any of our shows? <laughs> this is true. This is true. Moving along. We always make the NFL we inappropriate jokes. Mm. Well, since we're talking about good gimmicks, let's go into this for a little bit. Since so we've always thrown out a lot of what our favorite gimmicks, let's think about what they have in common. What is it that makes a good gimmick good? Is it the gimmick itself? Is it how the gimmick relates to the audience? Is it the person portraying the gimmick? What's the key? Well, one big thing is the point in time the gimmick is brought out it, it has a lot to do with with society and with just like again just the point in time you know a lot of the gimmicks in attitude era worked because it was the 90s a lot of the gimmicks in you know the original era worked because it was like the 80s or the 70s or whatever because that's what was accepted at that time and it was what was needed at that time and I'm, I'm gonna say in my opinion it's the guys portraying the roles that too for example, uh, for example, they even mentioned this on, I think it was The Undertaker, This Is My Yard DVD, DVD or one of the other ones I got of him. They even mentioned when Undertaker debuted, they did not think that character was going to last. They literally created him as a throwaway character. But the fact that was he portrayed it so well they, and the audience, made the audience respond so well to it, they kept him. Whereas you also get great gimmicks that just don't really work because the person with the gimmick just doesn't really, you know what I mean, click with that true. particular role. <clears throat> cough, sing hard, cough. Yeah, I think the person behind the gimmick, the person portraying it, is vitally important when you're talking about lasting appeal of the gimmick. Because the gimmicks that have last, that have endured and lasted, you know, the test of time, a lot of it is because of who the person is, you know, the Undertaker being the poster child for that. The reason why the Undertaker is as relevant and as popular today as he was when he debuted is because Mark Calloway is that fucking awesome. He made the Undertaker at this point. He is the reason the Undertaker pervades to this day. Yep. And having never lost at WrestleMania doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Booking for the win. And it also goes to, with that, it also goes to show the, in my opinion, the dedication he has for it. Because you'll notice when he was the biker, therefore he was more quote human. He could essentially speak, appear in more stuff and more TV shows. He gave interviews and stuff. Whereas when he's the dead man, he deliberately tries to stay out the public eye as much as possible to try and help encourage the what do you call it, mystical aura of The Undertaker, if you will, which that goes a great way. Like, you've had that before now. Like, oh, we, who was it now? I think it was, there was someone in ECW. I think it was Sandman or Tommy Dreamer, one of those two, the one that got blinded. They sat out at home for, for ages just so people actually thought they were really hurt. When you get people that are willing to go that extra mile, that can be a fucking awesome as well. This 
But yeah, a good gimmick is a combination of a lot of stuff, you know. Right person, right place, right time, good writing, all of that. Good booking. <laughs> good booking, yep. And I think that's – the booking part, that's a big problem with a lot of today's <clears throat> gimmicks is a lot of gimmicks are good and they start getting over. But then the WWE either if, – if, if it's not something they created that they don't support, they either quash it right away or they say, oh, we can make money on this, and they shove it in your face so much that it probably dies. Cough, yep. Zack Ryder, cough. Just like what they did Fandango. with, yeah, Fandango with the Fandango. I mean, yeah, that too. <laughs> if if they had left that, that would have been fucking huge. <laughs> oh, it would have been. Okay, well, that's good gimmicks. Why don't we go ahead and talk about some of, I guess we could probably incorporate the bad and the ugly at the same time, because it's going to do it inevitably anyway. So let's talk about bad gimmicks. Gimmicks that either uh, just, they did not work, they were stupid, they were offensive. I... I have one. I have one, but I can't remember the wrestler's name. Maybe one of you guys will tell us. I remember him as a kid. It was so fucking stupid, but it it made it so bad it was awesome. So I don't know if it should have been under good. I'm not sure. He was a wrestler that at the end of the matchup would reach down and pull his opponent's underwear off through their tights. (laughs) And he did it to the referee before now as well. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) I don't remember his name, but it was fucking awesome. Okay, then. I don't remember that. I may have to look that up eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? I think one of the stupidest gimmicks, and we can all agree on it, is uh, the gobbledygooker. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of a given. That was wow. But the, but the ironic thing about the gobbledygooker is, is it was one of those so bad it's good gimmicks because it, it, it's at the point where you can, you can just say gobbledygooker and even today's wrestling fans immediately know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. <laughs> bad gimmicks. Well, if we're gonna talk about bad gimmicks, I'll throw I'll throw one. I think I think it's also like I said, we said it's a matter of uh, the gimmick being supported properly and used. And I think one that I think started out as a really good gimmick but turned into just fucking stupidity, uh, Brodus Clay. Because that started off really good. Yeah. Because I still remember the first night he the first day of it hyping him up for like three months. That's all the monster Brodus Clay will return, and they kept pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. And finally, the one that they had him, and they showed the picture, his name on the on the door in the backstage area. And everybody was ready. It's like, oh, here comes the monster Brodus Clay. What are they going to do? It's going to be the big monster. He's going to destroy people. And then he just, Funk is on a roll. Everybody was like, what the fuck? And then the, the, the Funkadactyls came out, and he's dancing to the disco music. And people went nuts, and they loved it. And he was huge for a few months. And then, unfortunately, then it kind of – the gimmick worked for him, kind of a mid-card guy, and then it died down, and then they stuck Tensai in there and killed it. Yeah, pretty much. They stuck Tensai in there and changed his his uh, attire and stuff. They started giving him, like, fucking uh, – like, spines going down his back and stuff. I'm like, no. No. He's not a Power Ranger villain. What are you doing? It's not power, just Klingon spinal armor. Haven't you ever built a Klingon character? And how about Gilberg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gilberg was one of the best gimmicks. He was hilarious. Gilberg doesn't want to know who's first. Who's next? Gilberg wants to know who's first. <laughs> Gilberg was awesome. That was pretty funny. That was one of those so bad it's good gimmicks. That that was pretty good. I did like that. Um, That's the perfect segue into another one I want to talk about. I'm surprised no one mentioned under the the good gimmicks. Uh-huh. Probably one of the best faction gimmicks ever. New, new, new world order. Uh, up until the point they put like half the damn company in it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new world order was awesome. And that, that was, was a great gimmick. It was a great idea. That was an amazing idea. Yeah, yep. Yeah, New World Order. Let's see. Bad gimmicks. Bad gimmicks. What do we got? I mean, there's tons of bad. How gimmicks. about how about absolutely every single time ever that someone win besides Owen Hart 
when someone won the King of the Ring and had to be suddenly adopt the King persona. <laughs> And I say besides Owen Hart, but I'm sorry, the King of Hearts was actually fucking good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when every every other time when someone wins, and suddenly you got like King Seamus, and he's dressed like fucking Loki. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck's going? <laughs> no. No, if he was yeah. actually dressed like Loki, that would have been awesome. <laughs> he did. He had like the big green fucking helmet on. <laughs> you don't remember King Seamus? I vaguely remember King Seamus. I vaguely remember it. I, I do. I do remember he had a big green cape. I don't remember the helmet. Yeah, he had, like, the Celtic war helmet. It was like, what? Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um, I, never, um, I, I, do, I do remember probably, um, honestly, the most successful iteration of that. Oh, the hell! King Booker! That was stupid. <laughs> that was incredibly fucking retarded. Yeah, I that know. that pretty much ruined Booker T. I mean, if coming over to the WWE didn't ruin him, that that was the nail in the coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Came out King Sheamus. Um, no, another really. Although, I mean, I understand what they were going for, but I think it was a stupid idea from the beginning. <laughs> Horn swoggle. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. That. Yep. They, they could have done something really good with him if they wanted to, just because he has a ded- dedication and he's, you know, not bad in the ring when he actually does his stuff. I'm actually kind of impressed with what he can do, but no, the direction they went with him, I'm just like, oh my god, talk about really bad stereotyping. Yeah, yeah and he like couldn't talk for years, and then they give him the ability to, and then they just have him do all this dumb shit with it. And you're just like, what? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, they didn't let him talk for years, and then the first time he opens his mouth. He's a he pulls out this fucking awesome yeah. rap. I'm like, wait, dude can flow? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, wait, he has mic skill? What the fuck are you doing, WWE? Well, friends, <laughs> it's not just Hornswoggle. They've been they've been they've been doing that for years with little people. Any little people in WWE. I, I seem I seem to recall a specific instance during the Attitude Era where Al Snow mentioned he had a closet full of them ready to do his bit. <clears throat> dude, Al Snow versus the four midgets was one of the funniest <laughs> matches ever. <laughs> yeah. They had, like, the little ladder and stuff. No, we the greatest match... Made no, the... one of, like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, the greatest Sorry. match ever featuring little people was the king in his court versus Doink and the Dinks. Yep. That's what I was about to mention. Well, it wasn't Doink and the Dinks, because it, it was Dink, Wink, Pink, and stuff. Yeah, when they we would, refer to the match, that's how they generally call it, but yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that, that, that was horrible. I couldn't believe I did that. I think Hornswoggle could have been one of the greatest managers of our generation, and they just – they don't let him take the mic. And it's like he can talk. He He's good on the mic. Let him talk. He'd be a great manager. But yeah. no, no, they just keep him back and use him for stupid jokes and crap. And I will say that was – because we, 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 we kind of touched upon it then. I mentioned the good uh, good gimmick, evil doink. Bad gimmick, face doink. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. because who remembers the Survivor Series, which ended up being the team of Doinks versus someone, uh, versus, I can't remember who it was against now, but it was people like the fucking Bashums and shit. Well, not Bashums, what do you, what do you call it? The fucking, it was like shit loads of people. Like, I think they even had Mabel at one point, all in fucking Doink face. <laughs> the world's yeah. biggest clown? Evidently. Yeah. Mabel, or you kids may know him as King Vis or King V, or you know, what the fuck they called him at one point. Oh. I can't believe it, but I can't believe Big Daddy V and stuff. Uh-huh. Let's just call oh, him yeah. Vis. Let's just call him Vis. Talk, right? Talking about right. stupid gimmicks, I mean, he gave us one of probably the most awesome moves ever, but still, it was a dumb gimmick. Was Big Daddy V? So, oh my God, no, no. Just <laughs> he gave us the Visagra, which was actually kind of cool. But aside from that, just no. We don't need someone that big in a smoking jacket. Not, not really. And whether or not you di- you agree or disagree with this one, your mileage may vary. I know, I know, with fallen angel Kage will have seen this, but I really do not like Joker Sting. A Sting in TNA when he tried to become. Heath Ledger's Joker. No. <laughs> that, that, that just sounds yeah. like a bad idea. That, that was bad. I mean, he did a fair job of imperson- of doing the, the impersonation, but no. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, he did it where basically it was still Sting and he was just adopting the persona and stuff. But no, the only time that worked for him was when he went from basically looking similar, dressing similar to Ultimate Warrior to now the Crow. That worked. Don't don't mess with the Crow. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with the Crow. Oh, let's see, bad gimmicks. Um, oh, I, speaking of bad gimmicks, how about um, what was that guy's name? The Repo Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, he's future Hall of Famer. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go to DLC it. for next year's game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Repo Man is definitely a future Hall of Famer. If not, maybe he can repossess Hulk Hogan's. Thingy Hall of Fame ring from Abyss. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God. Speaking of stupid gimmicks. <laughs> God, Abyss with the Hogan ring. Oh, <laughs> that oh, was boy. dumb. Also, you want to talk about stupid gimmicks based on real life? The McMahon-Helmsley era. <laughs> that entire gimmick was fucking stupid. I'm sorry. It was stupid the first time they did it. It's stupid now. Yep. I don't think you're getting any oh. argument, no. Nope. Or oh, it's something which, if you disagree with it, it's cool. Not making a big deal, but like I mentioned past, I thought gimmick-wise it was fucking stupid. DX after Shawn Michaels left. The DX where they Army? Start, where, yeah, where they start bringing in fucking... They brought in six. He wasn't even a good member of the NWO, and yet he's their first call. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He was like the member of the NWO that used to drop out to people just to get rid of them, basically. And yet he was the first pick for x Pac. What the fuck? Because <laughs> they were friends. And then they bring in Billy Gunn, whose best gimmick was when he used to be with Bart Gunn and they used to shoot guns, which was fucking cool. <laughs> and then they turn him into that. What the fuck? No. <laughs> what was their tag team name? Wasn't it like... The Smoking Guns. The Smoking Guns? That yeah. was fucking awesome. <laughs> Talking guns were awesome. I like them. But go. I said you, your mileage may vary with that because to the, anyone listening, same thing with these. Some of these gimmicks we mentioned is bad. You may actually enjoy. Some of the ones we mentioned is good. You may fucking hate. True. Very true. Very true. Yeah, so like that, everybody has those, you know, those gimmicks that are absolutely terrible, but yet for some reason you still like them. Everybody has a couple of them. It's, it's sort of like a, they're guilty pleasure gimmicks. I mean. For, for like example, showing people light or blowing up in limousines. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to say, personally, I know, uh, Jeremy speaking, it was a terrible gimmick and most people hate it, but for some reason, I actually liked the Boogeyman. I, <laughs> I thought that was a funny gimmick. It was stupid, but I thought it was a funny gimmick. And if they, the, the sad thing is, and this always pisses me off because they do this every time, is they have perfect storylines they can use some of these guys for, and then they put them in the video game and not in real life. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's a um, there there's freaking a uh, there's that like, that uh, storyline in one of the WWE games a, a few years ago, back when Boogeyman was still with the WWE, where you're the Undertaker and the Boogeyman is using his powers against you, and it's like a fight of the guys with the superpowers. Like that would have been fucking awesome on TV. Why didn't you do that? Because Undertaker would have won. Boogeyman didn't deserve to lace up Undertaker's boots. <laughs> it's because the Boogeyman was a poor man's Papa Shango. <laughs> that too. And Papa Shango was just—he was a—he uh, had moments. <laughs> Papa Shango, it's hard was, a, to, Papa Shango it's hard was a to, poor man's Kamala. It's hard to say Papa Shango sucked, but at the same time, it's hard to say he was awesome. He was just in the middle. True. He, had he was better time. when he was the Godfather. <laughs> no, he was better when he was the good father. I was like, speaking of gimmicks that have people on the fence, <laughs> right to censor. I loved right to censor. That was a they great awesome. gimmick. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was good until they got Godfather in there. <laughs> but Stephen Richards, like, you could believe he was that guy. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. when his hair was all cut and everything. You're like, oh, my God, he looks like that kind of douchebag. And same and, thing and with Ivory. Ivory as a prude was yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, Ivory definitely. She did a that. great job with that character. Yeah. But speaking of bad women gimmicks, since we're talking about women, how about the cat? She had a gimmick? Uh, yeah. <laughs> she actually kind of did. After a certain point, when she got with China, you saw her come out with t shirts that said, like, slave, and China with master. And then she started to basically dress herself to look like a mini China. 
it was heavily implied she was China's lesbian concubine or whatever you want to call it. Right. <laughs> Speaking I, of good things, I, it's I, China. I, I, yeah. I always thought the cat's gimmick was just that she was always conveniently nude whenever somebody got thrown through a locker room door. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was I mean, that, how that perfect was China's gimmick though, the ninth wonder of the world. I liked China. That was yeah, she was she that was, was good. the perfect gimmick for her. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you my favorite female gimmick, if we're talking just in terms of gimmicks, not in terms of in ring ability. I really like Daphne from WCW. Mm-hmm. I I don't know who if anyone else does though, because some people fucking hate her because of the screaming. Some people love her. I liked her along with David Flair. <laughs> there you go. You know, we, another good gimmick I, I was just thinking of, one that WWE kind of let go to waste and, and didn't do anything with, Ariel and Kevin Thorne. Oh, that, no, there was a reason behind that. Would you like to tell the tale? <laughs> I know, but they were – that was an awesome gimmick. I'm sorry. That was the so reason – You mentioned the hurricane. Yeah. And I, was, I was about to mention, mention that. Damn you, Richter. Yeah. That was the, <laughs> Sorry. the reason you mentioned was the reason for getting rid of Ariel. It wasn't really the reason for getting rid of Kevin Thorne, which, speaking of Kevin Thorne, I'm going to have to say, I feel sorry for that dude. Yeah. Mordecai. I fucking loved yeah. Mordecai. Mordecai was awesome. Not what? everyone liked him. I liked Mordecai. <laughs> I thought I was the, the White Undertaker. Like... Yeah, he was awesome. <laughs> I loved Mordecai, yeah. And I was like, I want to see him face Undertaker. I want to see this. Yes. And, we, and, then the, and that's why they did it. And then they decided, you know, we told you to go out there and be like Undertaker, yeah? You're too much like Undertaker, you're fired. Then they bring him in as vampires, like, sorry, vampires won't sell. Get rid of him. Yeah, what was it, a year, two years later, and then Twilight came out, and then boom, vampires became a big craze again. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Just imagine how popular he would have been if they'd just ridden it out just a little longer. Actually, he could have been hugely popular if what they originally intended for him went through. Because when they were going to bring in the Kevin Thorne Ariel thing, what they were actually going to do as part of that gimmick is they weren't going to be alone. Is they were going to actually come back with Gangrel and form a new brood. That's what they were going to do. Because but they they were talking about doing the deal, but they couldn't get the contract to go through with Gangrel. They were talking about whether to bring Andrew Christian back into it, but the contract with Gangrel fell through, so they just scrapped the whole idea and just stuck him on ECW. Yep. And how about this? This one may again be one <laughs> some people like. I didn't like Pirate Patrol. <laughs> Pirate Patrol was awesome. No. I liked that gimmick. I liked the entrance with the rope. I just didn't like it as a gimmick because I was like, I like his finishing move. But other yeah, than that. <laughs> his finish, his finishing move was awesome. His rope thing was awesome. It was just, it, it was a case of, it was one of the worst gimmicks to use in wrestling because there's no fucking water. There's no boats <laughs> for him to be a pirate. He's literally just walking out there being like, yeah, I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Kazarni without yeah. a carnival. Oh, Kazarni! Yes. <laughs> Kazarni. Oh, poor Sinbodi. That gimmick is so bad. I didn't even know about it until like eight years after the fact or whatever. I hate you, <laughs> James man. mentioned it. I was like, Kizarni. who is that? <laughs> yeah. He had to link yeah, us a video, and I was like, oh my god, I never saw. He that. was known in ROH as Sinbodi, and they brought him in basically with the same gimmick, which changed his name to Kazarni, and. They did like they did a promo for like four or five weeks. They did promos about Kazari. The promos were creepy and weird, but awesome. And then they brought him in, and he wrestled like three matches, and they fired him. And yeah, and you got stuff like that as well. You've also got stuff like I don't want really like the rip off gimmicks when they rip off. Like I mentioned with Gilbert, I don't like the rip off parody ish gimmicks it's sometimes because they're too bad. Like Goldust when he went when he became. What, which one was it? Was it seven when he did it? When he put on the Undertaker hat and coat seven, and comes yeah. down to the ring and he's, and he's like, yeah, I don't need all this stuff anymore. And it's like, oh, fuck off. Stop doing this stuff. Or, or over in TNA when the thingy, Billy Gunn and Road Dog formed the Voodoo Kin Massacre or whatever the fuck, or oh, Mafia. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the fuck it was called. And it's like, no. 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 <laughs> Speaking of Gold Dust, one of his gimmicks that I really liked is what he the, the persona he took on when he went to TNA, Black Rain. Ah. I mean, number one, that's a fucking awesome name. Number two, he looked awesome in black and white, just makeup and body paint instead of black and gold. It was awesome. He mm. looked dark and evil, and and I think he had a, a he had something like I think it was a bag with a rat or something. It was like a Jake the Snake type thing, but it was awesome. It's like okay, I like that. I approve of that. I will say that was a great gimmick, Gold Dust. 
Goldust was a great gimmick, only because, in my opinion, that would go into more the right timing, like Marcus mentioned earlier, and also the right person playing him. Because he played Goldust when he first came in, it's so fucking well. But if you go back and you watch TV and stuff from around that era, that right around the time it started to become okay to be a homosexual. Not It wasn't as proud as people are now. It was becoming okay, which means there was still a lot of fear in the air about that subject. So making him this creepy heel that used his homosexuality to distract people was actually a brilliant strategy. Yeah. I believe that's referred to as the Gorgeous George strategy. <laughs> I thought it was called the Simon strategy. Oh! oh. Hi, Simon. Hi, Simon. Anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of terrible gimmicks, am I... Just because I'm scrolling through coming up with ideas here. Does anybody remember the zombie? Yes. <laughs> zombie was gold on the mic, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The zombie was riveting, as Taz said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I oh, love the God. fact Taz couldn't even sell it. And you could almost hear the fucking anger in his voice. <laughs> and since... and they, well, speaking of good gimmicks, the Tasmaniac. I liked Taz. Taz was, awesome. Taz was awesome. I wasn't a massive fan of his, but I did like Taz. I thought he was, I thought he was pretty cool. He was to this day, he has probably my favorite catchphrase of any wrestler. Taz is gonna kill you. No. Win if you can. Survive if I let you. Yep. That was good. That was good. Uh, I was gonna, uh, think we're talking about bad gimmicks, and we've yeah. talked about this in past podcasts, which I'm shocked how many different topics we have that this comes up in. How about Tim White trying to kill himself? <laughs> 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 it was yeah. so bad. It was awesome gimmicks. <laughs> Good God. Wow. Then, I think we just need to generally do an episode just about Tim White trying to kill himself just to get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's just... That, that's, one of those, that's, one, that's, a, that's one of those on the borderline of offensive gimmicks. <laughs> Coming soon to WXR, Tim White suicide evaluation. There you go. I mean, right on there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be epic. <laughs> and let's see, what else? Um, stupid gimmicks, stupid gimmicks. Um, How about well, people based on phoenixes. Ha, ah, funny. You just, by the way, you just insulted one of your favorite divas. So good job. She wasn't based on a phoenix. She had the last name. All right. <laughs> anyway. Um, speaking of bad gimmicks, what about those? What the, what the fuck were those two dudes? Um, the, the fucking Highlanders. Yeah. Rory. Like, oh, we're, we're, we're more Scottish than Roddy Piper. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Speaking of awesome gimmicks. Yes, Piper was awesome. He made he made wearing a skirt. Rod. He made wearing a skirt cool. And since we didn't mention him before under the good gimmicks, we have mentioned him in the past. And I, I believe I got the other ones mixed up a second ago when I mentioned their names as well. How about the Basham Brothers? <laughs> Uh, they were pretty good. It was, uh, I guess they, they were kind of like the male bellas, and it did work when they. I mean, they were effective under JBL's cabinet as the whatever the fuck he called them. But uh, I thought I thought those two with the black dominatrix thing or whatever. It oh was yeah, that part different. of the gimmick was good. Yes, I and I thought I thought the, as a gimmick it worked. In the ring, they fucking sucked balls. Yeah. <laughs> and since you mentioned them, Jim, wait, that wasn't about that, good gimmicks. Wait, that, well, that wasn't the Bashams. You're thinking of the Gemini. I'm not thinking of the Gemini. The Gemini were the ones that came out with the Dominatrix chick, I think. Were they not? No, that was the Bashams. Yeah, was You're talking about that black chick, right, Mole? Yep. Yeah. She won, like, Tough Enough or something, and she had that one gimmick, and then after the Bashams kind of went away and the gimmick died, we never heard from her again. <laughs> or was it her name, like, not not to be racist, racist or anything, because I honestly can't remember her name. Wasn't it like Shaniqua or something like that? <laughs> I think it was. Although, speaking of JBL's cabinet, and he mentioned it before. Oh, God, Bucky I know where with this. What oh, was it? Jillian Hall with the fucking fetus on the <laughs> face? <laughs> yeah, the, oh, that was disgusting. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was dumb. But yeah, since you she mentioned has a them, dead fetus I... on her face. <laughs> there you go. Since you mentioned them, um, good gimmicks, the Bella Twins. It's, they suck in the ring, but yes, it's been effective. 
No, but the gimmick is awesome. The like the twin is, magic thing. Twin... I mean, that's really unique. Yeah, and and at least one of them is hot, so you know that doesn't hurt. <laughs> and speaking of, of bad gimmicks, and this one's for Richter. Meat. Ah. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. I forgot How meant that. dumb was that? <laughs> that was pretty dumb. I'll oh. tell you. I'll tell you another gimmick I thought was fucking stupid when they used him this way, uh-huh. but yeah, at the same time, it may be one of those so bad it was kind of hilarious. Mm-hmm. Planet Stasiak. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the moon to <laughs> the rock and instantly be thrown out the ring. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the Planet Stasiak part of the gimmick was dumb. The you're so low on the totem pole that all you're good for is running through the ring and getting tossed out by the rock. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, that was good. How about a huge erection? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I just love uh, the name was awesome. That, that's just a great name. <laughs> Here's a gimmick that's kind of on the fence. It could be argued either way, depending on who you are. Hi, Simon. Um, Big Dick Johnson. <laughs> Hi, Crispy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In all fairness to that guy, that guy was actually a WWE writer for many, many years, and it probably took him a lot of courage to go out there in a man thong and do that. <laughs> he did it well. <laughs> he, did, he did do a good job with that game. That was good. That was good. Uh, was I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a gimmick we hadn't mentioned for a good gimmick. I don't know if this counts or not because it was more of a storyline than a gimmick. But how about Jesus stopping Cena? And I know he was <laughs> Jesus or how the fuck you found something, but fuck it, he was stopped by Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when I read the name, it's Jesus. <laughs> I forgot about Jesus. That was funny. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, of gimmicks that could go either way. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. That was a pretty good game. Mr. T? <laughs> no, Curly Joe. Oh. Curly Joe was awesome. About his Mr. gimmick T. was kind of eh. Yeah, his gimmick was okay. That was How okay. about the Minotaur guy? <laughs> no, <don't mean> <laughs> yes! I don't mean the new one, I mean the, the actual tall Minotaur. Oh, that guy, yeah. I, mean, like... I have to ask, is the one that's with the tag team now... Is he a second-generation superstar? Because it's pretty much a coincidence that he looks like that guy. I know. <laughs> he could well be. He is. He's going to be in Legacy, too. He needs uh, to. Uh, He's their manager. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of people that can't get a gimmick over to save their lives, how about Ted DiBiase? Ted DiBiase, I think, could get a gimmick over because he worked well with Legacy. He's worked well on his own. It was just that we kept misusing him. You can't just take him and then throw him against, like, fucking Zack Ryder and shit on pre-taped stuff and expect people to give a shit. <laughs> yeah. This is true. They kind of wasted Ted DiBiase, sadly, but other people may disagree. Yeah, they kind of Speaking did. of good gimmicks, Ted DiBiase. There you go. Yep. I like... Everybody's got a price. An IRS. <laughs> IRS, that was good. I like and how about how about this one? This is one of the greatest manager gimmicks of all time. Virgil, the mouth of the South. Oh, no, not Virgil. Jimmy Hart. Yeah. No. <laughs> how about how Jimmy about Hart with Virgil? The mega... Virgil Trump. doesn't matter. <laughs> well, only Virgil is a good gimmick. Yeah, lonely Virgil is the gimmick. But yeah, the mouth of the South. That was that was awesome. Yeah, that was Hart. awesome. That you was need awesome. to mention it. You need to mention it, Marcus. What? If you'd like to know more about the Mouth of the South, check out Showtime for Monster Brawl. Ah, that is true. That is true. Yeah. At the Halloween special. Also, also, from... also if you're watching that, look for that. Also, if you're watching that, look for that Colonel Crookshanks guy. He looks familiar. Yeah. And if you're watching the Rat on Showtime, you may thank Rick the Hammer and his special guest Marco Shadow. Ah. Uh-huh. Fuck you. <laughs> well, anyway, speaking, speaking of terrible gimmicks that killed many careers, how about the Spirit Squad? That's not where I thought you were going to end that. Sentence. No, no. I'm going to have to say. <laughs> and if you have, to have a gimmick, that when you have five guys, guys in a gimmick, only one of which has a career after it. Like yeah. I said, like I said, that's still the best thing Dolph Ziggler ever did. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Suck on that, Vicky. Oh, Spirit Squad. 
Let's see what and, else. Um, oh, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a MVP. MVP, yes. Hmm? Power Ranger. <laughs> MVP was a, MVP was awesome. He was balling. Now speaking of gimmicks that were really stupid and yet awesome at the same time, how about Shelton Benjamin's mama? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird you mentioned her. I, I was just about to mention Shelton Benjamin, only because <laughs> Team Angle was awesome. The Gold Standard was awesome. He's actually had some awesome gimmicks. Sadly, he just didn't have quite enough charisma to pull him off, microphone yeah. skills and shit. Yeah. But in the yeah. ring, he was fucking awesome. He's the reason yeah. that we can, well, excusing this recent game. Where we can lean ladders and run up them and stuff properly, as everyone. Yeah, he he was amazing in the ring, and he unfortunately he suffered from what I like to refer to as John Morrison syndrome. <laughs> Basically, being amazing, oh. being amazing in the ring, and people loving you, and yet being unable to get over because you can't talk to save your life. Ah, oh, I thought it was fucking Melina. Okay. Well, no, no, <laughs> he didn't. No, that's a, that's a whole separate gimmick. That, no, that's and a whole I, separate problem. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Eminem were actually kind of cool. I did like Eminem as the tag team with the lights, the red carpet, the poses. That was awesome. It was. Like, the Hard Dynasty was an awesome gimmick. Yeah. Both of which WWE split up way too fast. <laughs> Which is going in that direction. How do we feel about the Miz? Right now, Miz is in that category I mentioned before. Of, he doesn't suck, but he, he's not awesome. He's just there, however, he, he however, no, Hi, Stacey. no, I, I mean, he's just there. If they're not giving him the right stuff, when they give him the right stuff, I think Miz is actually pretty damn cool. I like Miz, mm. yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I much prefer face Miz to heal Miz because when he's face Miz, he can be funny and he's he's actually pretty damn funny. I don't know, heal Miz had that girl with the face. And I, I know everyone, I know when I say the girl with the face, that doesn't narrow it down, but you all know what I mean. That little girl that was just like, mm, I'm in the Oh, audience. yeah. That's true. The, the girl that won the slam, for best audience reaction. But was, since, since, we're, since we're kind of drifting off, if you wanted to wrap, before you go wrap it up, Jim, I was going to say, since, just to end it, uh, we are still getting decent gimmicks nowadays. The Wyatts. Yes, I can agree with that. And honestly, for the, the most part, before yeah, the authority, I'm saying for the most part, the shield, yeah, they were pretty good. Um, I said Brodus Clay before they stuck him with Tensai, who already had a terrible gimmick, and they just put him into a worse gimmick. Hmm. Fandango, Fandango, yeah, Fandango was a great gimmick. Um, CM Punk, Punk's got a decent gimmick, yeah, it works. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I got coming in here. Um, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane, that's pretty entertaining, yeah. Um, can I mention... Uh, what's that? How about Randy Orton? Because I, I know not everyone likes Randy Orton. I, mean, I like Randy Orton. I, it, but how do you feel about Randy Orton? Because I know not everyone likes him now. Do you like him now? Or did you like him when he was more punting people in the head? Or did you like Legend Killer? Because he's had some great gimmicks. He has, he, he has. has. I, don't, I don't like him now because I feel... What they're doing with him now, and I understand what they're doing, and they're you know trying to make him out and out heel, but I think what they're doing to him now ruins what came before, because Orton's never really in all the gimmicks he's ever had, face or heel, he's never been the kind of wrestler you know or have the kind of gimmick where he would shy away from a fight. He'd always go in and just be like, yeah, you you want to talk smack about me when you get my face? Boom, RKO. He kind now of... he's like running the fuck away, like wah wah wah, protect me, Triple H. That's kind of what he did in, in Evolution for a while. Yeah, but Evolution was before he really had a yeah, gimmick. Before he had the gimmicks, which he's had some great ones. Legend Killer was awesome. I'm sorry, I still loved the RKO to Hulk Hogan across the car. That was awesome. But <laughs> how about you, Rick? Any gimmicks right now you like or dislike? Hmm. That haven't been mentioned already? Um, not that I can think of. So I did like original CM Punk, but you mentioned that, and the Wyatts are pretty good and pretty unique. And those are the only ones I can think of. 
I liked I liked CM Punk when he was doing the straight edge stuff. Yeah, before the society, like when they turned him heel, that made no sense to me. But I liked him like when he first came in. Yeah, I liked his feud. With, I liked the straight edge society stuff when him with him v Jeff Hardy. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. When they tried to continue. <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, when when they that was brilliant. That was really. I why didn't we mention this for we're taking real life stuff? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> What? I had forgotten that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that too until we just talked about that. But that worked. I liked CM Punk in that role. Oh, the however, straight edge, yeah. However, yeah, with the uh, with Jeff Hardy part, but I yeah. didn't like it when they tried to continue it with stuff like Undertaker. It's like, oh, Undertaker. Okay, I must do the exact same gimmick. You're causing these people to have hallucinations. So you're basically a drug. Yeah. That's the problem I f- that's the that's the problem I have with current CM Punk as well. It's like he came out and he was like things want to I'm going to do the new resistance type thing and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to win the title." He's wearing a stone cold shirt on the ramp. Fucking awesome. Within 2 weeks it turned to it turned to him just spewing about ice cream bars. They, the WWE doesn't know how to book him right, I think. Why well, didn't like when they had the straight edge society and like made him heels? Like, <laughs> this guy doesn't smoke or drink or do drugs, and he's a bad guy. Boo him. I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. That's yeah. a good thing. You can't, make, you can't vilify that. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, where, where's DDP when you need him? Hey, 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 WWE, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, WWE vilifies him for basically telling kids not to do drugs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boo this man that doesn't drink. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? That's why, that's why it became stupid when WWE kind of realized that, and then his straight edgeness became just random shit that he was against. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can agree with that. I miss Festus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesse and Festus was actually pretty entertaining for a while. I give them credit but, on that. But I will say, I do find it kind of hilarious, the chick, whatever her name was, the chick that left the Straight Edge Society. I find it weird that we fired her just for how getting a DUI because it kind of broke gimmick. That's like saying, oh, Undertaker passed out in a supermarket this week. He's been rushed to hospital. In hospital, they announced he's alive. Oh my god, he's breaking his gimmick. Fire him. <laughs> yeah, well. it, yeah, That doesn't work. Unless they announce he's sitting up in his bed and people are like, oh, okay, I see. Like, no, yeah. no, wait. Oh, never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, I feel bad right now because we've got the we have not mentioned the single greatest gimmick of all time. Kerwood White. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Kill and White was awesome. Yeah. Although I will say, that was an awesome gimmick, not Kill and White. Eddie Guerrero was a face with his cheating and tactics. With his light cheating <laughs> steel, yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he untied the boot, that was great. Rest in peace, Eddie. I liked the, I liked the chair one. I really wish yes. he got to That was amazing. You should be able to do that in the game to this day. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Speaking of a gimmick we haven't mentioned that I thought was actually kind of awesome, the APA. Mm. I like the APA. APA, we're good. We're muscle for hire. <laughs> and we drink and play cards. You want our office? Come look for the fucked up place in the back. <laughs> yeah, go through the door. Don't knock, knock around. Yeah, exactly. yeah, knock on the exactly. door. I will say I'm in the minority here, I think, which is fine. Of I like the APA. I prefer JBL. As JBL, I liked the JBL gimmick. JBL was a good gimmick. He made that work. The wrestling it's... god, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of terrible gimmicks, if we're going to go back into that, speaking of JBL's cabinet, we all remember Orlando Jordan. Mm-hmm. It's okay, it'll mm-hmm. be. Am I the only one that knows what happened to him in TNA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Apparently. You want to tell them all? <laughs> nope. Go ahead. <laughs> Basically, they turned him into this really weird ass, like heavy makeup wearing transsexual dude that freaked everybody out. Huh? Hi, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Hall. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking weird. Google pictures of Orlando Jordan TNA. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> and there's only one member here that, well, he's not here right now, but there's only one member. That's actually ever been a sweet transvestite. 
Hi, Hi Simon. Oh, not Aeon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Well, why don't we go and wrap this up? Uh, this has been a fun little talk about gimmicks. Um, post us a comment uh, on social media for the tweet when this link to the video goes out, or in our thread on the uh, XPAL Pro boards. What gimmicks did you like? Your favorite gimmicks, least favorite gimmicks, best, worst. Um, here's, <coughs> here's a quick question, real quick, just on the top of your heads, folks. What gimmicks would you like to see? Anything that you can think of that hasn't been done, or at least hasn't been done recently, or hasn't been done well that you think could be done? As I, as I mentioned in the past. I want them to, I've mentioned this to you guys in the past. I want them to sort of find some indie wrestler. I don't, I don't care who, because they've had different people doing this in the past. Find an indie wrestler who's fucking awesome in the ring and microphone and stuff. Maybe. Maybe doesn't quite need the microphone yet. But get, get find someone with, like, that weird outsider look. And put, like, Joker-like makeup on there and make him the son of Doink. Ha! <laughs> I would watch that. I'm sorry. I would watch that. I would watch the Joker gimmick done right because Sting's was kind of like it's Sting trying to be the Joker. No, but if it's if it's an evil clown, if it's actually like that, I I would do that. That'd be interesting. Marcus Richter, Angel, Queen, anybody? Gimmicks you'd like to see? Gimmicks I'd like to see. Don't know. Yeah, not off the top of my head. I'd like to see a heel Cena gimmick, but that's never gonna happen. <laughs> it did happen. It was it was called Doctor of Thugonomics. He was a face. Not when he first started being a rapper. This is true. Back when he walked out with fucking what the hell was the name? Fucking Bull Buchanan and shit. B squared. Yeah. B squared. Well, talking about gimmick, that was just dumb. Quick. Quick. <laughs> Richter, give me a beat. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want a stupid gimmick that I just remembered? What about Matt Morgan with the stuttering? <laughs> yeah, that, that was stupid. That was terrible. <laughs> oh, naked Here's Midian. That could go either way, <laughs> could be good or bad. And I know, I know, Richter will remember this. Want to be my friend? <laughs> Yeah, I did right. Yeah, I can't decide awesome. if I like it or hate that one because it was like funny, but it was also dumb. Like well, I guess, I, the Heinrich came out. He kept writing poetry. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. They, they, they were, the thing is, there's there's generally, I think, overall, general opinions of Heinrich. Early Heinrich was weird. Heinrich in the LOD was wrong, and Heinrich raping Michael Cole in a closet was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I will also say a gimmick I liked, and I, I was kind of sad this guy never came to the WWE. He never will now because I've seen him recently. He's he's past it. I can't, I liked Vampiro in WCW when his feuds with Sting when it was like graveyard matches and shit. There you go. Which th that's something we need to discuss in the future. Graveyard matches, yeah. gimmick matches because we don't gimmicks for wrestlers. How about gimmicks for matches? That's true. That's true. We should talk about that. Put it on the list, Mole. Indeed. But yeah, I will say one gimmick that is actually in the works, and I really hope he gets pushed to the main roster soon. I want to see that theatrical singing dude from NXT. I can't remember his name. Aiden English. I yes. want Aiden English on TV. For those of you who may not be familiar with Mr. English, basically, he's me. But that aside, um, he's effectively a uh, a theatrically trained thespian actor and uh, theater performer with a fabulous mustache who walks out to the ring with no background music, singing his own personal theme song. A classically which, trained style, and it's pretty awesome. Which, sadly, I don't think that's actually going to get pushed through, as you said. Because if you look at people in NXT, <laughs> and when you look at them now, 99% of the time, their gimmick changes. It does, but a lot of times if they're going to change their gimmick, they change it, you know, I tested in NXT before they push them. Like, for example, Husky Harris was down there, did fucking terrible. They changed him into Bray Wyatt, was down there for a few months, he got pushed. I, I believe Pew Pew, who, by the way, for those listening in, she's actually listening to our podcast as we're recording this, has summed up Aiden English's gimmick very succinctly. He's Neil Patrick Harris. There you go. Yep. <laughs> He's James Phoenix if he was a man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ouch. Ouch. And that is on the list. I am the very model. No. 
All right, well, not his theme song. No, I won't go there. <laughs> so, those are gimmicks. Best, worst, terrible. Uh, I will, for the benefit of those listening who are true wrestling fans, are going to be upset if I don't mention it. Let's just say, worst gimmick, the Shockmaster. We all know it. Yeah. And it needs worst to be gimmick met- or greatest entrance? <laughs> 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 and I'm sorry, worst gimmick, Oz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, oh I boy. Which is bad. which is amazing because the same guy you've got the NWO like we mentioned before, Kevin Nash, yeah. awesome, Oz. What the fuck? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and quick, I, I... let's mention let's mention Isaac Yankum. Ah oh. <laughs> I have to call Jack. We're going to have to do this later. I was waiting for that. There we go. <laughs> I was going to say, most thankless gimmicks of all time. Fake Diesel and fake Scott Hall. Uh, yep. Anyway. How about, how, how about Jand? Hmm? Sorry. You, you guys don't remember Jand. Uh, fake Kane, basically. Oh. The reason people, uh, a load of people on uh, like a load of wrestling boards and shit start to refer to him as Jan is because a while back someone was starting to post about Kane and they posted his name Jan. So then when fake Kane came on, everyone was like, oh my god, it's Jan. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same boards, like the pro wrestling boards and shit, which is why you see like Saxony calls Joker accounts and shit. <laughs> or you see that in the audience all the fucking time. Gotcha. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, this has been our weekly podcast on gimmicks. Uh, like I said, let us know which ones you think are good, bad, awful, things you want to see. Let us know. And we will see you next week for another episode. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, Marcus Shadow, Chris the Mole, Richter Hammer, The Fallen Angel, The Queen of Hearts, and uh, listening but not participating, Geeky Girls down there. Thank you all. This has been WXR. Good night, everybody.